the presence of our elders, our leaders, our traditional rulers. I will be happy to see represented by another time to see the leader of Ayala Fair, the leader of Ayala Day, all our distinguished leaders of Nigeria, governors, former governors, so on and so forth. So many people here. I stand on those protocols. I'm proud to be here. I come here this afternoon wearing three hats. The first is the hat of a very proud person who is married to Indigo. And I speak on behalf of my beautiful wife who's right here present. Please stand up. I'm amongst my people. And we are together. Before I go into just a few words that I would like to contribute, let me say this. My friend and brother, Governor Ayofayo, she would have been here today. In fact, we planned this whole thing together to come together, but one or two things came up very, very late last night, and he said he wouldn't be able to make it. And of course, I was very upset, and I said, look, these are our people, we're being led by our leaders, and we must be here. It was very, very unfortunate he couldn't make it. He asked me to say a few words on his behalf, which I will. Also, another friend and brother of mine, Gary Adams, the Are, Wanakakanfo elect, would also have been here today, but he has his installation on Saturday by the Alafia Voyo. He's the Generalissimo of Yoruba land. He also asked me to say a few words on his behalf, which I will. But then finally, I'll just say, a very, very few words on my own behalf, but I'll be very, very brief. First of all, the governor has said that he stands in total and complete solidarity with this meeting and this newfound friendship, this handshake across the Niger. He sees himself as primarily a friend of the Igbos, and he has always stood by the Igbos, and he will always stand by the Igbos. There is a rising tide in this country which seeks to build that bridge. And Fayoshi is part of that rising tribe, uh, of that rising tribe. And he asked me to tell you that he will do whatever he can to continue to build that bridge and strengthen that bridge and ensure that our people, the great and noble people of the Southeast and the Southwest, move forward together with one accord and stand firm in fighting for the rights of our respective populations in a wider and a greater Nigeria. So he identifies with you, he sees your pain, and he's proud to be part and parcel of this gathering. On the part of Gary Adams, my friend and brother, who is now to play a far more significant role in the affairs of Yoruba land and this nation, and of course all of us, under the leadership of Afeni Ferre, of which we are very proud to say, Gary also extends his very best to you. He says as he stood for the Yoruba, so he shall stand for the evil. Euro will be one that will have monumental implications for what's going to happen in the next few months and years in this country. And I urge each and every one of you to pray for him. Because if anybody knows the historical significance of that title, they'll realize that to make it very clear that this is a great gathering. Long overdue should have happened many years ago. And it's the beginning of great things. But we must focus on the issues and stop trying to be too politically correct. And let's look at those issues very briefly. In this nation today, there are slaves called vassals and there are masters. Unfortunately for us, those that see themselves as masters consider the rest of us as slaves and vassals. Simple. What we need to do is to come together and say to them with one accord that we are no slaves, we have never been slaves, and we will never be slaves. The suffering of the people of the Southeast, and I say this without any fear of contradiction, the suffering of the people of the Southeast is something that we, in the rest of Nigeria, have to apologize to you for. You lost almost two million people in the civil war. Children, one million children. You were slaughtered on the night of January 
that on the night of July 28, 1966, when 300 evil officers were slaughtered in one night, and the great Fadri, who sacrificed his life to build this bridge, and the great, uh, the great leader of our country at the time, the great Ironside, all of them stood together, and they all died together. 300 were killed that night. After that, a few months later, over 100,000 Igbos were slaughtered in the north. Pregnant women had children taken out of their stomachs. People were slaughtered from house to house. They were killed by flies. Then came the civil war. One million little children, one million little children were starved to death. After that, year after year, decade after decade, pogroms, killing, slaughtering in the north of primarily Igbos and also southerners didn't stop there. They also, as they have always done, slaughtered people in the middle of And I'm glad that the great Governor Jang is here today, who has spoken so well. Their people have suffered almost as much, if not more, than the Southeast. Why? Because everything was taken from them. Their identity, everything. And they slaughtered them morning, day, and night. Last Christmas, 808 people slaughtered on Christmas Day alone. Yet the slaughtering didn't stop, and we know who does the slaughtering. It has gone on and on till today. Yesterday was Benway. Today it is Taraba. Before then it was Numan. It goes on and on. And I will also say this. What has happened in the last one year in the Southeast concerning those that are members of IPOL, what they have done to them is absolutely reprehensible. It is unacceptable. It is wrong. They came, they slaughtered, they killed. And I stand, and I speak to you today, that as a friend to the great man Dikanu, I will never forget him. And I call on the government of Muhammad Buhari, whatever you have done to him, wherever he is, I ask you to produce him and let us have him. Whether you've killed him, tell us. Whether you have him, tell us. Bring him back to us. I acknowledge him. I also acknowledge the hundreds and thousands that have been slaughtered, the young iPod warriors, the young Igbo warriors, the Yoruba that have been slaughtered over the years, many don't know. We have them here. Many of our people were locked up, were killed during the June 12 struggle by the same people. Many were driven into exile. Abiola was killed. Abiola's wife was killed. It went on and on. But let me say this. The time of reckoning has finally arrived. Once the strength of the Igbo and the strength of the Yoruba come together, the time of reckoning has arrived. The hegemony of those that have ruled over us since 1960 is here.